Hello, chemistry students. Welcome back for another episode of Naming Compounds with Miss Zinnaker and Mrs. Baker. I'm so excited about this. Me too. Oh, man. Okay. So what are we doing this time? Today, we are going to be learning about ionic compounds. Now, Mrs. Baker, what are ionic compounds? Because we just got done watching a video on molecular compounds. That's right. But remember, we did we did watch that video at the beginning that talked about the different kinds of compounds. If I'm right, tell me if I'm right, ionic compounds were the ones that had a metal and a non-metal. Awesome. Yes, you are correct. They are made okay. of metals, bonded to another non Metal. So does that word ionic compounds mean anything though? What are ionic compounds made up of? They are made up of, well, the metals are called cations. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Just like a cat, cations are positive. <laughs> All right. So ionic compounds are made up of ions. We got a cation coming first and then we have our anion. And I don't have a joke for an anion. Anions no. are just negative. All right. Do we always have to put the positive one first and then the negative one? Always? Yes. The cats come first before okay. your anions. All okay. Right. So like if we look at our, our uh, compounds that we have here, oh, I look, I saw you even said it says metal and non-metal next to group one. We always start with the metal and then we go with the non-metal. Awesome. So it would be lithium chloride, dilithium oxide, and then trilithium nitride. That's really close, and I appreciate the effort. However, we're not going to use those prefixes that we learned about molecular compounds. These metal and nominal compounds, or ionic compounds, are going to have a little bit of a different pattern to them. Oh, is that why we're you doing a different video? Yeah, it's a different video. <laughs> got it. Okay, got it. All right, so for the first one, this L-I-C-L. So with the first metal you always get to write down what its name is. Just copy and paste it from the periodic table. So Li is a symbol for lithium. By the way, guys, while Ms. Zinnaker is doing this, make sure you have your periodic tables out. Please pause and go get it if you don't. All right, sorry, go ahead. And thank you for that. And the second element, very similar to uh, molecular compounds, you're going to write down what the element's name is, but instead you're going to switch up the ending to an IDE. So chlorine now becomes. Oh, chloride. chloride. So get rid of the, okay, lithium chloride. And you're okay. done. So you go on to the next one, Li2O, and because it's a metal and a nonmetal, we don't need to use those prefixes. So again, we're going to follow that rule. We're going to look up Li. It's we just did that. We did. So we're just going to copy and paste. It is lithium still, but O is oxygen. So what would our ending be for oxygen then? I think it's just oxide. Yes, it's just going to be. Because you said we drop at the end and changing to IDE. Oops. Hey, what oh, are you oops, doing? Oops, oops. Stop that. Oops. All right, I bet I could do the next one. Oh, yes, okay. you can. So if it starts with LI, I don't care that that subscript's there. So I'm going to just, I, you already looked up lithium. Thank you very much. And then if I go and I find N on the periodic table, that's nitrogen. So that is that going to be just lithium nitride? Awesome. Yep. And that's how easy it is. All right. But when we move on and do the reverse route, when we look at the name and we have to write it to the formula, like in the next column, things are a little bit different. We have to pay attention to one more thing on the periodic table. So, okay. So like when the lithium chloride, there was no subscript of one, but the lithium oxide two and the lithium nitride three. So we got to look at something on the periodic table to let us know if we need to actually put in those subscripts. Because remember our names don't have those prefixes to tell us. So remember how when we, in our last unit on our periodic table, where we put the charges of all of the, the, the different elements on the top. Do you remember that, Ms. Zinnegar? I do. I do. Okay. But I, sometimes I forget them. Okay. So, but we didn't do it for all of the elements. So right now we're just focusing on the ones where we did. So that column one was, the, so the alkali metals, those were what? Plus one charge. Plus one. And then the alkaline earth. I know it. Those were the plus twos. Yes. Okay. And then all those transition metals, those poor little guys, they didn't have any. But weren't there three other ones that we needed to know? There were three special ones. One of them was silver. Okay. And I, I kind of remember, hey, start writing here. Stop that, Ms. Inigo. Oh, no. My computer is having a meltdown. Okay. So I remember silver was like here and then zinc was right here. And then aluminum was up there. We don't have a periodic table to show them that, but they can find that, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. There's a trend with this. Okay. What was the silver one? 
Silver one was plus one. Oh, did you ever call, tell your students? Did you ever call them the one, two, threes? <gasps> I did. Okay, so if silver is plus one, zinc is plus two, and aluminum is plus three. So knowing the charges of the, the metal, again, the plus ones, the plus twos, and then our silver, zinc, and aluminum, and we don't need to review this, but then they all, those non-metals, they know what those charges are too, right? Yes. Okay. So in ionic compounds, one thing about ionic compounds is the sum of all of the charges of them have to equal zero. zero. And so if I have a plus one, then I need a minus one. And if you look over at what Ms. Zinniger did over here, lithium chloride, lithium's a plus one, chloride's a minus one. Um, lithium's a plus one, oxygen's a minus two. Yes. Oh, what happened there? Oh, oh, because if there's two lithiums, I've, oh, okay. All right. Got to do a so, little bit of math there. Okay, great. So I right, can do this practice. with, so with silver, I'm going to come back to a color. So I'm just going to write off the charges to the side. Silver is a plus one and oxygen is a minus two. Okay. So if I need that charge to add up to zero, I can kind of do this math in my head because I'm kind of smart that way. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I think if I had two silvers, that would give me a total of a plus two. Yes. To go with my minus two? Yep. So then it's going to be AG2O? Exactly. Okay. Isn't there a cheater method of how we can if, do if this? If math is not your best friend, then you can learn how to do the crisscross method, which essentially works the same. If you look back again at the silver and oxygen example with the charges, instead of trying to do the math, you can just take the numbers of corresponding to the charge, not the plus or minus. And you just need Why to not? crisscross. Because you know what? We, it's not about the positive and negatives for the subscripts. All your subscripts are always going to be positive. But if you crisscross the charges, you get the same ratio for your subscripts. Now, even though we didn't write down a one for oxygen, it's still there. But remember, subscripts of one, you don't need to have in the formula. Oops. Hey, put that back. Oops. Oxygen. So in other words, if you can kind of figure it out just math wise, you can make the formula. Or if you, if you can't, you can just, if you wrote those charges down, just crisscross them down, you get the same answer, right? Exactly. Same answer. Let's do another example. Okay. Magnesium. That's an alkaline earth metal, which I know is a plus two. We've got oxygen again, which is a minus two. I like that crisscross. So if I crisscross down, I'm going to end up with MG2O2. Okay. Oh, that's good. However, um, if you notice with your subscripts, they're always in the lowest ratio. Is there any way no. we could reduce this ratio of Mg2O2, Mrs. Baker? Well, I guess if we divide both of them by two, exactly. then it could just go down to MgO. Yep. MgO. And this is going to be the final answer. So whenever, if you're going to use a crisscross method, it always, at the end, you always have to reduce your lowest ratio for your atoms. Okay, awesome. So like if somebody just did math, they know a plus two and minus two, they need one of each. But those who are using crisscross, they just have to look at those numbers and reduce them if they can. Exactly. Awesome. Let's do one more. Let's do um, potassium. No, 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 no. I'm going to do calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. Alrighty. I wonder if she can do it. I think, Let's see. Let I me see. I can. Let me I see. think I can. Okay. All right. So there's calcium chloride. So I'm going to look on the periodic table. My symbol for calcium is CA and it's a plus one charge. Nope. Two. It's plus in that two. second oh, column. Oh, yep. Plus it's, two. It's yep, in yep. group two. Plus two. And then chloride. That's going to be the same element for chlorine. That mm -hmm. is going to be a minus one charge. All right. I like the crisscross method a lot. Okay. So I'm going to take my two and take my one. I'm going to crisscross applesauce. <laughs> and so I should have a C-A-C-L-2. How did I do? Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. So guys, we don't need the prefixes to tell us the subscripts because we know the charges of the ions to do that. Now you might be wondering, what about transition metals? How do we do them? Do you see there's that little... We got we got to do a different video for that. Oh right? yeah, this takes a whole yeah. new different video. Oh, we're our, approaching our free limit. We uh -oh. better go. Oh no! All right, All right bye. Bye.